Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to go over how to make Microsoft Flight Sim look more realistic. Give it a little more pop to it. So far when Microsoft comes to you, when Microsoft Flight Sim comes to you on the PC, and I, I don't know, I, I haven't really looked at what it uh, looks like on the Xbox, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same way. But this is the settings that are more dependent towards PC. Can't really do much with it on the Xbox. But on the PC side, it comes to you looking washed out, bland. It, it, it just doesn't, the colors don't, don't pop out to you. But we, I have done some research on going through some settings and changing that. One of the settings is the user config file that is buried in the app data for the flight sim. I will show you the paths. Not everyone's going to have the same paths because you have the Steam version. You have the Microsoft Store version. Some people even back in the day when they first came out have the physical copy. I will provide, try to provide the actual physical paths at the best of my ability. If I can't provide it, my recommendation is doing a search on Google. But let's bring up the flight or the uh, user config file. So when you bring up the user config file, you want to go and locate at the very, it's towards the bottom of the file, uh, the page, the post process area and find color grading. It's going to be labeled as a one. You want to change it to a zero. So right there, basically the one means Microsoft Flight Sim is going to control the color grading. And you're going to flip it to zero. So you take control of the color grading. You are the one in control on what the, the what you want it to do. It actually, I, from what I've done some experimenting, it looks better when you have it at zero and you go through what, what I do. It looks so much better. And there's another thing we can do. So I noticed that when I do my cinematics, I've started doing cinematics um, and my shorts and my uh, my turning my long flight, long haul flights into shorter 30 minute flights is that the, when I do the cinematics, the draw distance is not as what, not what I thought it was. So, and I did some research on trying to find the draw distance where it would be at. And so it would be towards the top. It is labeled terrain and you, it's going to be set to 2.0. I set it to 4.0 and it hasn't really severely affected my frame rate, but the higher you go with that number, the more of a frame rate dump you're going to take. Uh, so right toy around with that to what you feel like your hardware can handle. Not everyone's going to have the same hardware. Like I do. I have a decently powerful computer. It's a little bit older. I need to upgrade it. But it, it definitely, if the higher you go, the heavier a load it takes on the computer because obviously you have a draw, their draw distance is a much farther and it has to draw in everything at that point. So now that we've gone through that, we need to go through the next phase. But before we do that, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It helps me out a ton. Also hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of things uh, planned in the future. More cinematics, more review plane, uh, review aircrafts. We have some big, big stuff coming and I'm excited to, uh, and I can't really say what it is just yet, but it, I'm excited that there's some big stuff coming. So, Greatly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. The channel is growing rapidly. Again, thank you. And now back to it. So the next thing you need to do is go into your control panel, your NVIDIA control panel, if you have a NVIDIA graphics card. So I have a 3080 Ti. It's a pretty strong video card. I still want to upgrade to a 4090. Eventually I will. But this is the settings I have set up right here. So if you guys want to pause and take note of what I have, this is what I what I'm running right now. I think the biggest one is image scaling that needs to be off and that it will actually, the system will perform really good. So, and then lastly, what you must have for the cut to change your coloring in your, your details is you need GeForce experience. GeForce Experience allows you to do a lot of different stuff. Filters, which is we're gonna we got well, that's what we're going into is filters. 
So what you need to come in here, go into the settings, the little gear button right there. Actually, I'm going to do it like this. There we go. The gear button's right here. I'm a little, I'm bigger monitor than I'm actually recording. So <laughs> right here's your gear. You need to also come down here after you go there and do end game overlay. This will allow you to do a ton of different things. So with that being said, you have that set up. Next, you need to go into you do a control or not control alt F3. Don't do F4. Please don't do F4. You're going to have a serious. You're going to be so mad at yourself. I do it to myself all the time. But right here is your filters. So. We're going to actually, you know what? I need to move my screen over so you guys can see that because I'm like I said, I have a bigger screen. So we're going to move this over. Boom. A little bit off centered. And then we're going to go to all alt F3 and there it is. So these are the three styles. Like if you go to off, that's what it looks like off. You can see how washed out it is, how bland. There's really no, it, it, it just, it's not that great. It looks more gray than it is popping out, but I have three different settings. So I have this one. It's a, it's a little more brighter. Uh, like it showcases the sun more. You, you have all these settings right here. Brightness and contrast. This is more your contrast, uh, style, I guess your the filter in this. So you have the exposure contrast. You can toy with this toy with it to your heart's content on the getting the settings you want. It makes things, it actually does change things quite a bit. Uh, you can change the shadows to the point where if it's the detail, you lose a little too much of detail if you go all the way. So you have to a little play with it. Make sure you get that area where you are happy with the amount of detail you're getting. Same with the contrast. Exposure. I don't really use this filter all that much. And then gamma. Same with the details. Sharpen. You can artificially sharpen it. Really don't recommend too much because it just doesn't look that natural. I try to make my stuff look natural as much as natural as possible. We're going to go up in the drone a little bit higher uh, here right now. And I'll show you what it looks like, like aerial, so that you understand uh, on the color differentials. So you have a lot of the, you have water in the side, so it gives you a good idea. You have mountains in the distance. It really, you can see then what it does. So you can see that the terrain really pops out with what I've already with this filter. Now, if you go and actually shut it off. It, it, it just it looks bland and just washed out. But when you put it on, it looks brighter. Now, this is the one I use. This is the one I use a lot for my cinematics. You see the green that pops out. The woods, the actual trees pop out more. You have the dirt pops out. The water even pops out more. I mean, it, it's, it look, the, do that. <laughs> English hard. Uh, the ground pops out. A little bit of better it just all around better reflection off the water is really good too you can see the different like the tide or not the tides the currents that are out here so in this filter here this is the one i use for my cinematics here's what why you do the tints all the way down tint intensity is all the way down the temperatures at 0.5 now i will put a disclaimer this is a disclaimer these settings are dependent to my hardware and to my monitor. My monitor is a LG Ultra Gear 3540, 3440, 3540. It's a 3440 by 1440p at 166 hertz. Now, I can't get 166 hertz on this sim because I have way too much stuff and all my settings are set to Ultra. Uh, and I have a 3080 Ti. So I, I'm pushing the limits, but I'm uh, the frame hit I'm taking, I'm not really too... I'm not really hurting that bad. Here's your brightness con uh, by brightness and contrast exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, gammas. This is all what I'm using right now. Just give them a shot. 
and let me know what you think uh give me opinions and if you like what you see or in the uh and if it makes your sim look a lot better as well and then we have also whoops i was already did that one details close that one up we go to details sharpens all the way to zero like i said really don't want artificial sharpening keep it as natural clarity you could really mess with that i like it around i think it was 45 ish 40 ish uh right there is about good enough uh hdr toning gives that a little bit more of a color pop and the bloom is also a little bit high the seven percent it's not that high but it's it's enough that you can get reflections off the sun and everything like that um it's there's just a lot you can do with the uh, with these settings now there's more you can do if you go to add filter you have auto depth field black and white color blind depth of field letterbox night mode old film i mean you have all kinds of different things in here that you can toy around with to see if you can make the sim more more to your liking now i what i'm using is what i like and i i would stick with at least for me uh image sharpening don't even mess with this i don't recommend it it totally it won't even move anyways uh so yeah this is what it looks like like i said with the sharp or with the filters off just washed out there's no color and then when you go back you have beautiful looking colors i mean it, it, it there, there's a clear difference on what things look like so and i i wanted to make put this out there because i know a lot of people out there i see a lot of people that want want their make their sims more realistic and i don't i mean i i was the same boat and i had to do a lot of research so i wanted to throw this out there so people can understand what to do and actually how simple it is it really is simple uh now with the going back to the user config file every time microsoft flight sim puts an update out that resets that's going to reset your uh color grading to back from zero to back back to one uh so you have to go through change that again uh i've only recently changed my field uh the the lod the terrain lod i've only recently changed that from the 2.0 to 4.0 i am i'm pretty sure the, the update will also change that um there are fixes so you don't the updates don't change this information but i'm not going to mention it because i don't recommend it because there's probably information in the updates that you want in these files uh so i mean you can always change it i think it was a, a read only but don't recommend it highly don't recommend doing that but uh yeah go ahead uh give us a shot i mean i really enjoy this it's really cool we're at seattle right now I believe out there in the distance that I don't know if that's Mount St. Helens. I could be completely wrong, but I know that we're, we're outside. This is Seattle. And I know Washington has Mount St. Helens, but yeah, this, I mean, this is, uh, I think it looks a lot better with the filters. Give it a shot. Let me in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, and if you, if you let me know if you use something else, if there's another way you, uh, you use, or you do your, um, your graphics or your realism. It, it really I'll, I'll go through my settings real fast so we need to readjust this to be more centered again boom so these are my graphic settings so i don't use dx direct x 11 or 12 i don't use direct x 12 it is a killer on frames at least on my computer i don't know why but it kills the frames but I, like I said, I have everything set to ultra. So yeah, give it a try. Let me know. I hope you guys have a great time. Don't forget to uh, hit that like button. Subscribe helps me out a ton. I am planning on doing more stuff. Uh, the channel is growing up exponentially and I love it. You guys are awesome. Have a good one.